Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. It's non-standard because it's not logarithmic only, it's not linear or polynomial only, it's kind of both. It's a mixture. Anyways, we have x times ln x, ln being the natural log with base e, equals x plus e squared, e being the Euler's number, which appears in log. So the base for ln is basically e, so that we kind of have E flavor on both sides. Like I said earlier, this is a non-standard equation. So we're going to solve this using a non-standard method, sort of. Anyways, this is a good example. And you probably find, you'll find other examples um, in my videos that uses the same idea. So let's go ahead and first simplify this a little bit. Let's put the x's on the same side. Great. That might be a good strategy because you want to solve for x, so you kind of want to isolate all the variables in most cases. And now we can factor out an x because x is a common factor. Makes sense. If you take out x, you get ln x minus 1 equals e squared. Awesome. What can we do next? Okay, so I want to put this in a different form and I'll tell you on the next step what form I want to use. First of all, notice that we have an ln x here and an x here. Let's go ahead and express x using ln x and this is how we can do it. e to the power ln x equals x. Awesome. Let's replace x with that. e to the power ln x multiply by ln x minus 1 equals e squared. Does this look good? Not yet. We do need something that looks like this. t times e to the power t. It's not in that form yet. S why are we trying to put it in that form? So that we can use Lambert's w function. Okay? To be able to use Lambert's w function, by the way, what is Lambert's w? If you define a function f of t as t e to the t, then the inverse of this function is considered Lambert's w function. But of course, it makes more sense if we express f inverse in this form, f inverse of t e to the t equals t. So it's kind of interesting because we're looking for a function that takes something like t e to the t as input and gives t as output. So it's kind of like extracting the t from here. Make sense? And that's exactly what we want to have. We don't have that, but we're close. Take a look at this. Take a good look. What are we missing? And if you said ln x minus 1, e to the power ln x minus 1 is what we're missing because this is ln x minus 1, so I do need a minus 1 here. Makes sense? But I can just magic the subtract 1 from the exponent. I do need to do the following. Take this, take this, and divide by e. And of course, you have to divide both sides by e. e squared divided by e is e. Too many e's. Okay. Tribute to Euler. Now, when you divide, you're going to subtract the exponents. That's the goal. So we're going to get e to the power ln x minus 1 because this is e to the first power. And bam, there you go. You got what you needed. Cool, cool. So now we have it in this form, t e to the t. But what is t? t is ln x minus 1. Don't get me wrong. This is not t. This is t. This is e to the t. Make sense? Okay. So now we have t e to the t equals e. And obviously you can solve from here. Well, let's just do things the Lambert way. We're going to w both sides. And let me write it as follows. ln x minus 1 times e to the power ln x minus 1. So it looks more Lambertish. And then the e, I want to write it as 1 times e to the power 1. Can I? Because e is equal to 1 times e, and e is equal to e to the power 1. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Now, when you apply Lambert on something like this, from the left-hand side, you're going to get this expression. Remember the, the extraction of t from t e to the t, right? We're doing the exact same thing with ln x minus 1. So this is ln x minus 1, and this one is just 1. Easy, piece of cake, right? And then you can add 1 to both sides, of course. You're allowed to do it. The rest is basic algebra. 
ln x equals 2 and then remembering that x is equal to e to the ln x one more time x is equal to e to the ln x but ln x is 2 so it's going to be e squared so that's the answer x equals e squared make sense okay now let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method which is going to be pretty quick and then we'll be done in a little bit okay but hopefully you understand why i divided both sides by e because that was the goal remember we were trying to bring it into this form so it's a very special form and then once you apply lambert then oh by the way i forgot to write something here i think that will be in form uh, very helpful if you replace f inverse with w then you're gonna see how lambert's w function acts upon something like this make sense okay awesome so that's how it acts Let's go ahead and take a look at the alternative method. If you want, you can use uh, call it second method, okay? But I'm just gonna call it alternatively. And then at the end, I'm going to share with you a graph, okay? So, first of all, I'm gonna do the same thing. Subtract x, and then factor out x. Same thing so far, and then, I'm going to do the following. Substitution. I want to replace ln x with y. ln x equals y. And then from here, x becomes e to the power y. So we get e to the y times y minus 1 equals e squared. Now take a look at this equation. Take a good look. Okay. Notice that e squared can be written as e squared times 1. And 1 can be written as 2 minus 1. So that when I set these equal to each other, hopefully you get to see the 1 to 1 correspondence. Do you? Do you see what I see? So from here, y is equal to 2. And hopefully you know y. And that means y is 2. But what is y? y is ln x. Awesome. So let's set it equal to ln x. And then again, x is e to the ln x and ln x is 2 so x is equal to e squared that would be the answer the only solution to this equation as far as i know if there's another solution that i missed please let me know in the comment section down below let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and then we'll finish up okay almost done now here's the graph of two functions y equals x ln x which is interesting because it kind of decreases in the negative uh, region and then in the fourth quadrant and then it increases making a minimum and then it'll intersect and on, it only appears in the positive section of x because remember we have an ln x and x needs to be greater than zero that's a domain issue and it's only going to intersect at one point and x equals e squared is going to be the only solution and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.